Now we're gonna talk about some really proactive steps, one of which is getting focused and active. And you about your father's business. So now your mind is in a place where it's focused on the things of God. That is a muscle that has to be built. Yes. And when you're focused on that, when you're meditating on that, when the thought of perversion or something like that comes, it's like, I'm focusing on this. Like, yes. it's an offense, it's yellow. When he shows me the escape route, I gotta follow the yeah. escape route. So that's my part. His part is to show me my part is to follow the escape route. Hi. Hi. Welcome back, Gather Family, to another Catholic Talks. Today we are on part 7C on this series that we are doing on Let's Talk About Sex. Now, part 7A and 7B, which if you have not seen yet, go back and even more. If you haven't seen up to part 7, <laughs> go and watch part 1. Um, part 7A and part 7B. We talked about practical ways to um, avoid um, sin as an unmarried person, to avoid sexual sin and our sexual desires as an unmarried person. So on the first 7A, we talked about um, self-discipline, how that only comes through the Holy Spirit and how we need to use the Holy Spirit in order to develop and bear that fruit of the Spirit. In part 7B, we gave you practical ways, and those were getting in the, rooted in the Word of God, watching and praying to avoid falling into temptation and fleeing and running away from sexual sin or avoiding it entirely and what that looks like. Now for 7C, we are going to be talking about becoming focused and active as a way of avoiding sexual sin as an unmarried person and avoiding fornication. So in 7B, a, a lot of the conversation was around what environments are you putting yourself in and are they conducive to righteousness or are they conducive to you following into falling into sexual sin. So what we're going to talk about now, which we'll see a lot in, in this video, is now you're being proactive. Well, okay, I've learned from part B what I need to be doing in terms of my environment, in terms of the type of entertainment I need to be consuming, the conversations I need to be having, how I'm interacting with people. Cool, that's all fine and dandy. Now I want to talk about some really proactive steps, one of which is getting focused and active. Right. It's really hard to get distracted by the temptation of sexual sin when you active and you about your father's business. and You out here doing the Lord's work because then you become consumed with that. And the thing about doing God's work is you're walking in the spirit, you're studying, you're meditating. So now your mind is in a place where it's focused on the things of God and not just you being tempted uh, to commit sexual sin. So let's look at First Corinthians chapter seven verse 32 through 34 in the easy to read version. I want you to be free from work. A man who is not married is busy with the Lord's work. He is trying to please the Lord. But a man who is married is busy with the things of the world. He is trying to please his wife. He must think about two things, pleasing his wife and pleasing the Lord. A woman who is not married or a girl who has never married is busy with the Lord's work. She wants to give herself fully, body and spirit, to the Lord. But a married woman is busy with things of the world. She is trying to please her husband. So here it's already set in the groundwork. And we're going to focus on a single man and a single woman. What Paul is telling the Corinthian church right, right in this passage, we can apply today, that when you are single, the person you should be all consumed with pleasing is the Lord. And that is going to prevent you from becoming distracted by the temptation because you're operating on what is it that the Lord needs me to do? What is it that the Lord needs to me to be accomplished? And as we know in scripture, right, that the, the harvest is large, but the workers are few. There's a lot that needs to be done. So you're not going to ever get to the point where you ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> yeah. And so what we're going to start off doing right now is looking at the spiritual aspect of things that you and us, we can be focused on because I'm unmarried, that we can be focused on. And then we'll move over into non-spiritual things. That way we have a healthy balance yep. of where we need to be mentally and actively. So as we saw in the scripture that a married man or woman needs to be focused on the things of the Lord. Well, what does that look like? The first thing that I'm going to talk about is that we need to be learning how to meditate in and studying the word of God and do that continuously. Cause the more 
that I study the word of God and I meditate in the things of the word of God. Because if you go back to part 7b, one of the key things to make sure that you are successful when temptation comes is that you're rooted and grounded in the word of God. So actively as an unmarried individual, we need to make sure that we're constantly in the word of God, studying the word of God to learn what he likes, what he doesn't like, what our obligation is to the Lord, what that looks like, and to make sure we're measuring ourselves against the word of God to see if we're fulfilling that or not. And as you study that word of God daily, it talks about how in order for us to be successful, we should be meditating in the word of God day and night. So I need to become, and we need to become, as unmarried individuals, we need to become students of the word of God and people who meditate in the word. Because if we constantly have something about God's word going in our mind, it causes our mind to be filled with the things of God, the presence of God, the power of God, instead of it just being empty and void and being a workshop for the devil to now start putting ideas and thoughts in our head that are not pleasing to God and that will lead to sexual temptations and falling sexually. Yeah. Next, we have learning how to witness to others about God and salvation and then go do it continuously. So when you're talking about God, you're, honestly, it's reminding yourself of how good God has been and how he manifested himself in flesh. He lived the righteous lifestyle. He, um, as Jesus, he died on the cross. He shed blood. He was dead for three days, rose on the third day. And how remission of sin and repentance of sin is available through Jesus Christ. When you're telling people about that, you're constantly putting in your mind how God loves you. How God gave his only begotten son so that anyone who believes in him have eternal life. To put it in a natural sense, for me, when I talk about all the great things my wife does, it makes me fall in love with her more when I fall in love. But it makes me appreciate her more because I'm telling other people how great my wife is, what great things my wife does. And so my mind is always focused on, oh, my wife is great. I don't need nothing else. I'm only focused on my wife. And I will say, as an unmarried individual, as an unmarried individual, the more that I'm out doing the Lord's work, I'm yeah. witnessing about the gospel and who God is and seeking to bring people into salvation because I'm so focused on other people instead of myself in a way that I'm doing the Lord's work. Is Number one, I'm just busy because I want to make sure that too, when I witness, because that's where the meditating and the study and the word of God come in, before I go out here as well to do that, to try to bring other people in the fold, I want to make sure I'm saying the right things. I want to make sure that I'm effective when I'm out here witnessing. But then while I'm out there witnessing and ministering to people and preaching the gospel to them, it causes me to be busy again with the things of the Lord. I don't have time to be falling into sexual yeah. sins when I'm spending time praying with this person um, so that they can receive the power of the Holy Spirit, baptizing people in water in the name of Jesus Christ after I've witnessed to them about what the gospel is. And those may be some things that are coming up, so kind of get ahead of myself. But in order to really, because a lot of times when we we'll talk to people, we're like, do you know what the gospel is? A lot of times people think that they know what the gospel is, but they don't. So to even take time to know what the gospel is and then start to teach that and witness that to other people, I cannot tell you the amount of fulfillment it gives me to be able to be effective and reaching people that were in the dark and so that they're able to come into the light. Number one, it's really fulfilling, but then number two, because I'm busy doing the things of the Lord, I am not just an empty vessel for Satan to come and use me and start to fill me up to do demonic, satanic, immoral types of things. And so what I find is the more that I'm busy doing, let me not say busy, the more that I'm actively doing what God told me to do, it by default causes me to avoid a lot of the traps and pitfalls that Satan would have me to fall into. Yeah. And this is the thing, being active is going to make you busy. And so you want to be active in the things of the Lord because a lot of the, the strength of temptation, outside of it, you know, of course, being our carnal desires, but it's time and opportunity. 
When you're being yeah. active and doing the things of the Lord, you have a lot less time and opportunity. That's good. That's yes. Yes. And that's where people have to put their mind on is because like we talked about the last video, you know, about your environments, your thoughts, your conversations, the things that you're doing, when you are being fulfilled, right, spiritually, you want to tell the people about it. So the conversations you have all of a sudden are more wholesome and edifying to you. The relationships you build are more wholesome and edifying. Your thoughts are more edifying. You're focused so much so on being active for God that your your focus now shifts from I just want to avoid temptation. I just want to avoid temptation to Lord, I'm focused on you and a byproduct of that is you're avoiding temptation. And that's where you want to get to. It's a process that you have to go through. This is why we're going through these steps, you know, meditation, praying, learning the gospel. So you can go through that process. But the, the great thing about when you actually start walking in the spirit, you really do stop thinking yes. about fulfilling the lust of the flesh. You do. Because you're only consumed with the Holy Spirit. Yep. And like you said, the more you try to focus on not yeah. having sex, you're going to have sex because it's on your mind. Yeah. So when you're busy and very proactive in doing the work of the Lord, because doing the work of the Lord is of God, your mind is filled with godly things. Yeah. And so by default, you're not going to be operating in sin like you would be if you weren't focused on the things of God. So it's very effective, you all. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about, um, besides witnessing, is learn how to pray for people, then go do it continuously. I cannot tell you, again, the amount of time I spend like praying for people um, and, and just like helping people and doing the good works that God said. Again, it's getting your mind focused, number one, on the things of God. But again, as you start to, and it's not just, I go pray for people. As you start to deal with people, they're going to open up to you. Yeah. They're going to start to tell you about their struggles, um, questions that they have. So the more, and, and it's all leading you into revealing God more to them. Yeah. So the more you have these interactions with people in the world that are looking for just to know God, a touch from God, or they're in darkness and they're looking to come out of light, that amount of those encounters, that's the way I want to put it, these type of divine encounters, again, it fills your day, it fills your mind, it fills your life with more and more of God. Because in order for me to pray, I'm going to have to know certain scriptures to incorporate in that prayer to make sure it's a powerful prayer. But then as I pray for them, they're opening up to me. And now they're probably going to start asking me counsel about certain things. The counsel that I need to give them, going back to the word of God, I need to know it so that I can give them godly counsel. So then it becomes this cyclical process of me just being wrapped up in God and involved with God and my mind being focused on God and it doesn't leave room for the enemy to come in and set those traps and pitfalls and temptations for me to fall. Next we have learn how to baptize people in water in the name of Jesus then go do it continuously. Number one I want to first because all these have at the end go do it continuously. It's not just a one off. It's I am constantly yes. continuously yes. Without season, unless I'm trying to get sleep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this, so I'm always about God's business. Yes. So, and it's like Leo said, like, to learn how to baptize people in water in the name of Jesus, there is a proper way to <laughs> baptize people. Yeah. Some of you may think it's uh, just a sprinkle of water, or I pour a cup of water on your hand and you're baptized. Yeah. No. I first have to understand why is baptism important? What does baptism mean? Why is it important for baptism in Jesus' name? Like the Greek word for baptism being made clean with water and immersed in water. All that has to add up. So it's constantly, I'm looking at different scriptures. I'm seeing the full mind of God on this subject so that I am operating properly and doing what it is that he's one commanded me to do. And I'm doing it correctly. Yeah. So the next one is learn how to pray for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that comes with the sign of speaking with other tongues and go do it consist continuously. So this is the work of the Lord. So like the steps we're going through is all about discipleship yeah. and, and yeah. bringing and, and going out and working in the harvest to bring the person of peace, to bring those souls 
that the Lord has touched their hearts and they've made the decision they're ready to repent, be baptized uh, in full submersion water in the name of Jesus and be filled with the Holy Spirit that comes with the sign of speaking in other tongues. There's a right way to do that and there's a wrong way to do that. And if you want to be an effective disciple, let me go see in the scripture, what does it mean to lay hands? What is the expectation when it comes to the Holy Spirit? Are they tearing? Are they saying hallelujah, hallelujah? Are we waiting? Is there just are they just going to feel warm? What, are the, what is the sign? How do I know that it's the sign? It, it's what Trey and people have been talking about. Like it is not just the action, but it is the education, mm-hmm. the knowledge, the understanding, and wisdom that comes from God that surrounds the action, so I can be successful in doing it. When you start like listing that stuff out. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, right there, you're like, oh shoot! I got to get busy about yeah, my father's exactly. business. Exactly. I don't have time for this other stuff that is going to distract me yeah. and pull me away from that. Yep. Yeah. The next one is learn how to cast out demons and then go do that continuously. Number one, casting out demons is not just something you enter into lightly. That's Correct. something you need to learn how to do. So number one, that's going to take your time, attention, and focus to learn how to do it. And then once you start to get in situations where God reveals you and you recognize that people are demonically oppressed, that you can now use the power of the Holy Spirit that you have to start casting those demons out. And I'm telling you, when you start getting busy yeah. and doing these work, good works of God that a number of these are considered like just very powerful signs, wonders, and miracles that you will be flowing in. What when, when I'm done operating, let's just say ministering to one person, because maybe I've taken them through the gospel. They've come to repentance. We do the water baptism and the baptism of the Holy Spirit the same day. We may have to cast demons out of them at the same time. By the time we done with that, we drain the pool. I'm tired. I'm ready to go to bed. Ain't nothing else left for Satan to try to come in. And you have to understand as you're flowing in these good works that God told you to do, he's right there present. So you're having this sweet communion Mm -hmm. with God as you're ministering to people as you go out. So when you're in the presence of God, we know that there's fullness of joy. There's peace. There's liberty. There's all these things that it just really shuts down any demonic activity Satan wants to put in your life to try to cause these sexual temptations yeah. and for you to fall into it. There, there has not been, I, I promise you, as a witness, there has not been one time that I've been praying with someone, sharing the gospel with someone, uh, baptizing them, praying with them to receive the Holy Spirit, or casting out demons, where I was thinking about having sex. I want to have sex with it. Just, it's not happening. Yeah. It, it does. It's, a, it's like a counterweight. It counters anything that is not of God that tries to come in because you're so heavily focused and driven to fulfill the good works of God. And I think with that, like this, what we're talking about here isn't some silver bullet that is just like, oh, that fixes everything. It's it's work that goes yeah. in it. That's why like we broke it out this way so you could see that this is. Like you are heavily active in doing all of these things and building the necessary competencies in scripture to be able to execute on these things and understand the work of the Lord. Like all of that work that goes into it is what's going to keep you busy and what is going to keep your mind focused on the things of the Lord. So much so that when temptation flares up, when temptation comes, because it's going to come, it's an offense. I don't have time for this. Like I've... I've been fulfilled in me fulfilling my obligation as a disciple. Why would I mess that up yeah. by messing around with you? Yeah. yeah. Just to kind of piggyback off what he said. And another thing, because you know, once you start get, getting active and doing these things, you'll find out very quickly, you don't have time for slip ups. Because at any mm-hmm. moment, yeah. God could pull on you and be like, okay, I need you to pray for this person. Okay. Yeah. Like you should be going out to the mall. He's like, okay, I need you to go over there and pray for this person to be you know, uh, healed or taught or share the gospel with them. You're not going to have confidence to do any of that. If you just had sex the other night and you know, you was fornicating and operating and sin. So then your whole mindset starts to shift as you start to flow in the power of God. And you become excited about this, this, that, you know, you're able to be used of God in this way. And you don't want to disappoint him by not being ready. It helps that motivation and it gives you a sense of drive and purpose to be like, I can't let myself fall into sexual temptations. I can't let myself, you know, 
be in this position because I never want to be caught where the Lord wants to use me or needs to use me. And I'm not confident to do it because I know I just operated in sin the other night, the other week because I laid down and had sex with someone. It's like, I don't even want to put myself in that predicament because at any moment, the Lord is always sending people to me or causing me to bump into people where he's like, okay, you know what to do. You know what to do. There's no way I'll be able to do it if I know I'm operating in sexual sins. And lastly, we want to include learn how to heal the sick, then go do it continuously. Yes. As we said, we cast our demons. This is not something that you just jump out into and do. Yeah. Yeah. It takes one, finding scriptures that talk about God healing, how God has purchased healing for us. And now you have to meditate on those scriptures. You have to build the faith for yes. being able to heal the sick. That's not just something that comes with one day I read the Bible and now I can go. No, this <laughs> takes, I'm spending intimate time learning what God's word says about healing, learning how healing was purchased through his blood, operating in faith to all right, I can pray for a headache. Well, this person's leg just broke. All right, let me pray for that. Like, it, that is a muscle that has to be built. Yes. And when you're focused on that, when you're meditating on that, like Donovan said, when the thought of perversion or something like that comes, it's like, bro, yo, I'm focusing on this. Like, yes. Yes. it's an offense. It's, yo, chill out. We focused on healing. Yeah, and honestly, and it, all of this, it becomes a built-in defense mechanism because then when people do come that's trying to waste your time, that's trying to tempt you, to try to get you to fall into sexual sin, they're not even going to try because they're going to be like, you know what, I ain't about to waste my time. You, mm-hmm. You're not about to entertain me in this foolish. You're darn right I'm not. <laughs> you better go on about your business. Um, so now we're talking about, you know, we talk about the spiritual things, about being active, right? And, f- and filling up that time and those opportunities. Now we'll, we'll talk about the, the non-spiritual in the sense of just other things that you could be doing, right? Like going to college and getting a degree. I don't know about y'all, like, but whenever I set a goal, because this is what we're going to kind of walk through, right? Whenever I set a goal, there's a huge accomplishment and fulfillment that comes when you finally achieve it. And this is where I think this advice becomes really real to people is, of course, when you're with someone, right? You're a man, you're with a woman, a woman with a man. You want to, you know, temptation is going to be there because you want to be with them. You want to show how you love them. And, and, and physical intimacy and sex is, is part of that when it's under the covenant of marriage. That is part of it. But there's also a side of just validation that people use sex for, right? Like there's there's an insecurity, there's a gap, there's a hole, there's something that ain't right that you're using sex to try to fulfill. So a lot of this practical advice is going to get people to actually start having honest conversations about what are the things that you care about? What is it that you want to accomplish in life? What is it that you want the Lord to help you achieve? Focus on that. Yeah. Because that's going to fill those gaps. That's going to take care of that insecurity. That's going to take care of that validation that you're looking for sin to try to fulfill. And that's not how sin works. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so setting a goal like going to college and getting a degree, whether you're um, in high school and want to go to undergrad, whether you completed your undergrad, and you want to get an, your, your master's, whether you've done your master's, you want to get a PhD, shoot, if you just want to get a certification, you want to, you want to try a career exchange, like focus on, you know what, I, I want to accomplish this, but I, not just accomplish it, I want to be successful. Yeah. Right? Because exactly. anyone can get a degree, right? Yeah. C's get degrees. That's not what we're talking about. I want to be successful. I actually want to comprehend and understand the material that I'm, you know, investing my time and efforts to achieve, you know, whatever the certification is. Yeah. So continue it in that same vein of non-spiritual things that you can do. We're talking about setting goals and accomplishing them. Another goal you can set is, hey, getting into a certain career path that you want. And again, not just getting into this certain career path, but being very successful I know in the career that I am in, it's not about I just go to work every single day. It's ever evolving. Things are ever changing. And I got to stay up on that. So I got to like, you know, take um, like trainings here and there and study different things to learn. We get new services and products that we can provide to our customers. I got to be up on that. So I got to study that when we come out with a new service or a new technology or something like that. So it's keeping me busy, right? It's keeping my mind, and, 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 and most of life is mental. Yep. If Satan can get you mentally, that's how you fall. So if you keep yourself mentally focused 
on things that are like of value, noteworthy, positive, honorable, then it's a default so that he can't get you there. So again, talking about becoming successful in a certain career path or trying to, maybe you want to switch careers and enter into a different career. Set some goals for yourself that you're trying to accomplish and actually go accomplish that. There are a number of people who are just out here wandering. They don't have no hope. They don't have no goals. They have nothing. And Satan is easily able to victimize them because they're not focused on anything. So, and this is, this is the thing, right? Cause like, talking about people who are single or unmarried, this is the time for you to be selfish. Yeah. So you're focused on the things of God, right? That is your unselfishness and doing your, your, your just duty and what you're called to do. But in terms of the non-spiritual thing, this is your time to be selfish. Pursue that career. Yep. Pursue that degree. Because you ain't got a spouse that you have yes. to, by scripture, yeah. care about what they want and they need. Mm-hmm. You don't have children. By scripture, is a requirement of marriage that you don't have to care about their needs and their wants. And, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that when you're single. I'm focused on me right now yep. and, and bettering my position, um, you know, my ambitions, my goals, whatever it is that I'm trying to accomplish. I just want to be a better person. Yep. <laughs> right? Like Jamiko said um, in the last video, you know, she's watching documentaries because I just want to increase my worldly knowledge. I want to be able to have interesting conversations. Yep. I want to be able to contribute to, right, like, Things that are going on in the news and actually have an intelligent thing to say. That yeah. she doesn't. But you get what I'm saying? Like, I, that's a great goal. Yeah. But what it does, it gives her something to focus on. Yep. Yeah. It gives me something to occupy the space between my ears. So I'm not just sitting here letting Satan beat up on me and with, with these carnal imaginations and all of this filth that the world is surrounded with. That now I'm just, I'm just laying in. Yeah. And with, which is what she said. A lot of people do is they don't get busy with doing something productive. Exactly. I'm um, staying in that same vein. We are going to go to volunteer work to better your community or the world. And I like how it specifies volunteer work to better your community or the world. Because some people just do volunteer work yeah. to fill a quota. Yeah. Because <laughs> they got, you know, court mandated <laughs> you know, responsibility. No, you are willingly volunteering your time to better the world or your community. I'm but like that. If I'm building a house for like Habitat for Humanities, I'm sorry, building a house takes so much mental capacity. Yes. Oh, I yes. can't think about sex during that time. I'm not <laughs> thinking about what I'm about to do with this person. No, I'm trying to build a house. I'm trying to make sure the foundation's right. I'm trying to make sure these people are getting fed. I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing something productive with my time because, as we say, and I don't mind, is the devil's playground. Like, yes. You know, if I'm not doing nothing, if I'm just twiddling my hands, all right, same mother like, oh, it's easy to pick him off. Yeah. Like, so when I'm volunteering, when I'm helping other people, it's fulfilling to me because I'm making a difference in another area. And this is this is the thing, right? Like what we were talking about in in part B is we'll try not to say like these are all the things that you you can't do if you want to avoid temptation. But this is how you fill those gaps, right? Yeah. It's so much easier to to date when it's like, you know what? I got this volunteer event that we can go to on Saturday, right? Yeah. Ain't nobody going to be thinking about having sex when you're volunteering. No. Right? Oh, you know what? I actually, I got this presentation that I'm trying to prepare for for class. You mind if I like practice with you? Yeah. You give me yeah. some tips and, and some pointers and what you see. Like now all of a sudden you have things to do. You have things to talk about that have nothing to do with sex. Yeah. And that's where a lot of single people myself included when I was single, that's where we kind of fall through the gaps because we ain't got nothing to talk about but sex. Yeah. Yeah. We ain't got nothing to do but date and do activities that put us in a position of wanting to have sex. You know, yeah. movie night, date night. We ain't doing nothing productive. We're not having no productive conversations. We ain't read nothing interesting, watch nothing interesting. We not doing nothing with our time outside of just going to work, punching the clock, looking to get the paycheck. So there's so many things that you can't talk about. But when you are living a fulfilled life because you're being active about God's work and being active in your life to be as productive as possible, all of a sudden now you got a lot to talk about. Exactly. You have a lot of other things to do that have nothing to do with sex. Yeah. Um, so the, the last one we have here is developing a hobby and pour your time and passion into it. I, you know, gardening, making videos for social media, photography, uh, learning a new language, um, 
Trey's talking about building a house, right? Like maybe you want to start learning how to be more handy in your own home. There's so many things out here to learn, and YouTube is free. Yes. <laughs> there really are so many like just quirky skills yeah. and hobbies. Just go try something. Yeah. And th this is like, this is this is my struggle. Is because oftentimes when we have this conversation with people and we're saying like. It, it always points to well, what am, what do I have to do then if I can't watch, you know, sexually explicit movies, <laughs> sexually explicit TV shows, listen to sexually explicit videos, go to sexually explicit places. What is there left for me to do? <laughs> and it pisses me off because I'm just like, there's so much. Exactly. Like, what are we? What are, are you in prison? Like, <laughs> There are so many things to learn. There are so many other things to do. But you just got to get out of your comfort zone yeah. of watching TV and listening into music. Yeah. Read a book. Learn how to sew. Learn a new language, right? Yeah. Learn about a different culture. Exactly. Go to the gym. Work out. Learn how to ride a bike, how to roller skate. There's so many different hobbies that take time, yep. that can just occupy that space so you're not sitting idle. And you just gotta stop being lazy. And I will say, just to give a testimony, as an unmarried person, two hobbies that I have. One is gardening and the other is video production. So both of those take up so much of my time. And this is in addition to me having my career and doing ministry, okay? So the gardening, that takes up and it's so fulfilling because when you're dealing with something that's living and alive, hey, maybe this worked out and it, it flourished. Okay, this didn't work out. It died. What do I need to do to get it better? And I like to make things yeah. beautiful. And so the gardening I do is with flowers and plants and trees. And so it's very fulfilling because not only are these living like plants and flowers and things, but it's also beautifying. So you, God can help me in using creativity of, okay, this year I want to plan it to look like this and have these colors. And it gives, and I get excited about it because it's yeah. something that I look forward to. We're going into, while this is recording, it's still summer, but we're going into autumn and I'm already starting to plan for next spring, like what I can do and how I want it to go. Again, it's causing me to use my mind and my creativity so that I'm just not void and blank up there. But then also when it comes to video production, I handle a lot of that for this ministry. So we, we do vlogs and we're doing this gather talks. I do word Wednesdays and I have to sit down after I get all the video and edit that. Yo, I could sit down and edit one thing for like four or five hours and I'm still not done with it. I got to do spend another four or five hours the next day and kind of do cleanup or finalize it, cut the commercials. Do Like I am so like occupied that I don't have time to be sitting around thinking about sex. But you know, when the sex thoughts do come, when, you know, maybe it's a slow day or a slow week and I had nothing to do, it's like, oh, Trimico, you better get busy and get your mind on yep. something because he's right there waiting to creep in. So these are some effective things that you can do. And is it, and we're not saying, like, just go out and start doing stuff. Just sort of take yeah. it Yeah. But what we are saying is, Get out of your comfort zone and go try something. Yeah. Because Tremiko didn't start off as a gardener. I did not. She bought a house and was like, all right, I got this yard. Let me do, <laughs> Let me do, something. <laughs> do something with this yard, right? Like, it's, it's, it's to try stuff. You may decide, like, you know what? I tried to do some gardening that ain't, that ain't actually for me. But I did find out that I actually do like sewing or I do yeah. like learning other languages. Whatever. Just go out and try something. Or cooking. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's so many things that you can do. And I know what people, the question is going to have, well, if I'm doing all that, I do desire to be married. I do desire to be in a relationship. Where does that come into place? Where it comes into the place is when the time is appropriate. Yeah. But now that you've been so focused on the Lord's work and you've been so focused on making yourself a better person and, and improving your life or actually, you know, just developing yourself personally, yeah. professionally, whatever you've been, you've been spending time with. When that person that comes on, comes, you, you've done the work on yourself. Yeah. So now you can actually have an honest conversation of like, because I am not simply just thinking about the fact that I'm lonely and I want a relationship. I'm not about to just accept any old thing. Yeah. And I'm rooted in God. So if you're not even coming with that, it's off the table. But what you'll see, a lot of people who've only been focused on, I want to be in a relationship, I want to be with someone, I'm alone, and I don't like that, they'll accept anything. Yeah. 
And that anything leads them into sexual sin. And I will say this, while you're, while we're unmarried, because I am, I'm going to say we, because I'm a part of that. When you get busy, number one, doing the things of God and making yourself better spiritually, but then also when it comes to setting goals and hobbies and fulfilling that, you're going into, if you meet someone in marriage, where you have something to offer. Because I can't tell you the amount of people that want to be hooked up in relationships, but they're not coming with nothing of advantage that they can offer the other person. It shouldn't just be, we get together and you just do do everything for me. No, they need to be coming with something spiritually and naturally. And you need to be coming with something on the table spiritually and naturally. So the time that we are by ourselves, spending that focus on God, but then also developing um, our goals, careers, education, developing hobbies. It makes you more of a well-rounded person yep. so that when you do meet that individual, you have something to offer. And hopefully they're on their end doing the same thing with God. And when he links you two together, you both are well-rounded and have something to offer each other. And another thing is, as you're, when we're talking about the non-spiritual things, as you're pursuing those goals, you know, those hobbies, things to, to, to kind of pique your interest, you actually open the opportunity for you to be to meet someone. Yes. Yep. Because that's another thing too. It's like, well, do we actually have anything in common? Yep. Do we have any similar interests? What is this relationship going to be based upon outside of our physical attraction to each other? Because let me tell you, baby, when you get married, that goes out the window. Yep. Not to say that you won't be physically attracted to your spouse, but if that's all you have, yeah. I'm telling you, you're going to struggle. Yeah. Because you with that person now forever until yep. you die. Yep. So if the only thing you had is I was physically attracted to you. You were physically attracted to me. We were tempted to have sex. So we got married, but you have no similar interests. Neither one of you have brought anything to the table. You have no professional or personal development and you have no developed relationship with the Lord. Well, you got a bunch of nothing. It's not going to work. And in that relationship, until that gets fixed, it's going to be a hard road. I'm just being real with you. Exactly. <laughs> so... Okay. So now before we end, we're going to now transition into talking about how God is able to deliver and rescue us from temptation. But we're going to really go into, it's not what you look like, because a lot of times when people think he's going to deliver and rescue, so he's going to do everything. No, we're going to make sure we make it clear, yeah. according to scripture, what he means. But I just want to make sure God wants us to know that while we go through this journey in life, as we talked about in the previous episodes, that in the parts of this series, that temptation is going to come. We looked at how to avoid, you know, falling to temptation and things that we need to be doing to make sure that we're preoccupied so that we're just not empty vessels for falling into sexual sin. But when that time does come, God says here in scripture, he's going to give us, what do you call it? Just comfort and confidence that he will be there to assist, to help us be rescued from these situations. So I'm going to read 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 in the New King James Version. God reveals, then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. So here we're starting to learn, and we're going to look at more scripture, that the Lord knows how to deliver the godly temptation. So we can have confidence and know. He's not going to just see that, you know, Satan coming to tempt us, and he's just like, oh, well, I'm just going to leave you out there. I'm not going to help you or show you an escape route. No, he's going to be there to help guide and assist us to get out of this situation of temptation. But he's not going to just take his hand, pick us up, and place us over there, girl you out guide you out. Now, there's a, there's going to be something that we're going to have to do on our part, but he is going to be there to help in delivering us. And everything we talked about, right, with the singleness in this video of, you know, being active and being concerned about the work of the Lord, that is the process in which you're going to build that relationship to where when he tells you, hey, here comes the temptation. When he convicts you, you know, you don't need to be doing that. When he tells you that's the trap, you're setting yourself up. That's the how. And the reason it works, because the godly are listening for the how. Yeah. The righteous want to escape the temptation. They don't want to fall into it. So they've developed the relationships that when the Lord is like, yo, what are you doing? They're like, you know what? You're right, God. I'm, I'm slipping. I'm, I'm 
Like, this, I'm walking right into a trap. Why am I doing that? And so many people, to what Tremiko said earlier, they think the way of escape, they think God delivering them from temptation is him forcing himself into the situation and getting you to stop doing something that you wanted to do. And that's not how it works. Because I've heard, you know, well, Lord, if you want me to have sex, you better do something to stop this. And, yeah. oh, well, he didn't do nothing. We in the bed having sex, so he must want. No! no. Like, absolutely not. So the next scripture is going to make it a bit more clear. Yeah. And that scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And I believe this is the, the Living Bible. The Living Bible. Mm-hmm. But remember this. The wrong desires that come into your life aren't anything new and different. Many others have faced exactly the same problems before you, and no temptation is irresistible. You can trust God to keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you can't stand up against it. For he has promised this and will do what he says. He will show you how to escape temptation's power so that you can bear up patiently against it. So Miko just said, like, it's going to make sense with the scripture previously because not only does God know how to deliver the godly out of temptation, but he's also going to show you how to escape temptation's yeah. power. So, like, because when I was reading once, I was like, all right, cool, he, he knows, but that's, like, I would have to say, like, all right, it's not enough just to know. I need to know how to get yeah. out too. Yeah. Exactly. God is also going to show you how you can get out. And I love how Donovan said, it's the Holy Spirit is going to be like, hey, don't yes. do that. Yeah. A lot of times we look for, like, oh, the it was a glowing, burning bush that just <laughs> told me don't do it. No. Yeah. You have the Holy Spirit. He's going to tell you, hey, don't, don't do that. Don't respond to that text message. Don't jump in your car and go over there. Don't even acknowledge or, you know, interact with this person at all because they don't mean you any well. Yeah. And this is the thing. Oftentimes we seek God in the miraculous, but we miss him in the simple. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what people minds go to when we're talking about a way of escape for temptation. It's the miraculous. It's, I was over there to sin and my engine block blew up and I swerved <laughs> to the corner but I didn't flip over but it stopped me and AAA wasn't there so I had to just go ahead and walk home because that was closer <laughs> than walking to that person's house. That is not the Lord. <laughs> that is, I'm just going to be, I'm telling you flat out, the Lord was not like let me just orchestrate all of this to get them to do, to stop doing what they actually wanted to do. And that's the thing. Temptation, it tempts us, it attacks us with things we desire and we want to do. The way of escape is the Holy Spirit convicting us or revealing to us or telling us, hey, don't do that. Mm -hmm. And it's, oh, you're right. I don't want to do that because I want to be in the right standing. Relationship with when you want to do it, the Lord is like, even conviction, hey, what are you doing? You want to do it? It don't matter what miraculously happens. <laughs> like, you won't be about busy doing what you want to do. And that's where people kind of, I think, miss the understanding where it talks about the way of escape. That's why I love the first verse we read when it talks about the God, he can deliver the godly mm-hmm. is because our desire yes. is to be in right standing. My desire is not to fall into temptation. Yeah. I don't want to do it. Yeah. But a person who is planning, who is plotting, who is setting up the time, that's not a way of escape. Yeah. You've already set your mind on that's what you're about to do. Yeah. And you just got to be honest with yourself. Of Are you in the position in the heart position where you're like, Lord, my desire is your desire. And I know that's not what you want from me. Yeah. He can he can help that person escape. Yeah. But the person who's living in denial, who's telling themselves, like, it's not going to hurt. Or, well, if he didn't want me to do it, why didn't he let me do it? Yeah. Go on, go on. You're deceiving yourself. And I love that the scripture says that he will show you the way to escape. Meaning, when he shows me the escape route, I got to follow the yeah. escape route. So that's my part. His part is to show me. My part is to follow the escape route. And like the two of them have been saying, once the Holy Spirit starts to tell you, don't go here, avoid that, stay home, don't do this, okay, not do this, X, Y, Z. If I don't follow, then I'm not going to be rescued from the temptation that Satan has laid as a snare for me. So there is a part we play in actually escaping from the temptation. And that is our obedience to the leading of God, which he's going to do through his Holy Spirit. 
So now let's go um, into the next verse, and this will be our last verse before we wrap up. So uh, we're talking about the blessed is the person that endures and overcomes temptation, right? And that blessing is that they will spend eternity with God because we know that the person that's going to see salvation is he who endures. And to endure means you've got to overcome temptation. So in James chapter 1, verse 12, we're going to read this in the easy-to-read version. Great blessings belong to those who are tempted and remain faithful. After they have proved their faith, God will give them the reward of eternal life. God promised this to all people who love him. So temptation is an inevitability. It is a reality that we all will face. But not everyone will make the decision to remain faithful yes. once tempted. And that's everything that we talked about in building up to this point. It's really about, as a single person, building the endurance and the practical tips, tips to make sure that your environment is right, your thoughts are right, you're, you know, filling up your time, your opportunity, the, the, the mental space. All of it is to set yourself up for success to be able to endure. When temptation shows up, I am so rooted and grounded in the word of God and I have been so active in, in spiritual development and being about the work of my father and also that I actually have hobbies, I have interests, I have a career that I'm focused on, I have ambitions, I have goals that I want to accomplish. That is what's going to help you endure when the temptation comes because you're not going to fall for the okie doke. You're not going to waste your time. And, and this is the big thing. You're not going to be naive and deceive yourself like, oh, I'm strong enough to overcome this. Oh, this is not what it is. Oh, this makes sense for me to go travel with who this person who I love and I'm sexually attracted to into this hotel room where we don't know nobody and nothing going to happen. No, you're going to start thinking about those things through the eyes of God and being like, that's a trap. Then I see it for what it is. And I want to just say real quickly in this episode, because we stated it in another episode, but when it talks about after they have proved their faith, God is not the one that tempts us with evil. We yep. saw in another episode, and I'll put the scripture down here in this episode, that temptation, of course, we know comes when we desire something, but temptation comes from Satan when it's something evil, when it's something trying to get us to go contrary to the word of God. God doesn't trick us into going contrary to his word. His desire is for us to follow his word. So when we're tempted to have sex, which is something that's contrary to what we should be doing as unmarried people, that is Satan tempting. But after we have proved ourselves through faith, what that's talking about is, is that faith, it, it comes by hearing God's word. That's what you're doing when you watch these gather talks. Yeah. The way that we exercise faith is putting corresponding actions to the word. So we learn in part seven that we are to flee. It was either A or B. I think it was B. That we are to flee. It was B. That we are to flee fornication. So I got to avoid it at all costs. So I need to do, and we gave you a lot of practical examples of what to do. So that's me putting my faith into action. So even though Satan is coming to tempt me to have sex, I know the word of God tells me not to operate in fornication and for me to flee it. Therefore, according to my faith, I'm going to flee sexual temptation whenever it comes my way. And what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the reward for me? What's, what's the purpose? What's the, because people are like, what am I getting out of this? The scripture, should, Donovan just showed you what you get out, eternal life. Yep. You don't get to burn in hell for all eternity. And we're in the lake of fire because you go to hell for a time being and everybody gets dumped into the lake of fire. So the fact that we get to spend eternity with a God who loves us, who cares for us, we will never have like worries, fears, we'll have peace and joy. That is the reward. So let that be your motivation if you're looking like, as an actor, what's my motivation? <laughs> Why should I be avoiding sex so that you can receive eternal life? Yeah. So with that, we hope you've enjoyed this uh, subtopic within this <laughs> bigger series. Um, the next time we will be back with the continuation of this series. In the meantime, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this with the many people as you know. You can join us on Facebook, Gather Ministries. Um, we have our Bible studies on Monday. And that starts promptly at 6.35 until 8 p.m. Um, you can find all of our Bible lessons on our page, on our website, gatherinc.org, where we have all the Bible lessons that we've taught so far. We are already on YouTube, so if you don't come on Sundays, we have all the lessons that we um, teach on Sunday discipleship training, so you can listen to those as well. If you want to, you can wait for the full lesson um, from those Sundays to come out and listen to that in conjunction with the audio if you're one of those type of learners. 
Uh, with that being said, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.